voice in here, a little bit of sound, and then a little bit of beastly, and we are live! What's happening? What's going on? I think it's episode 108, that's what Beastly tells me. Beastly, I wanted to wish you a happy Mother's Day today. You want to wish me? Why are you wishing me a happy Mother's Day? Because you're a bad Shut motherfucker. Shut your mouth, man. <laughs> What's wrong with you? <laughs> <laughs> How are you doing today, man? Happy Mother's Day. I hope you're having an awesome day. I hope you're treating your mother and your wife very well. Very, very much so, man. It's a great day for all the mothers of the world. And, and you wouldn't be here if it wasn't for your mom. So wish her a happy Mother's That's Day right. from, from all of us here at the Beastly Thought Show. It's a good week, man. I'm going to go see Captain America Civil War tonight. As soon as I, get- I just saw it today. I just brought the kids today. It was awesome. Oh, God. As soon as I get- Dude, I think it's, the best. it's one of the best Marvel movies ever made. I honestly think that. Is it better than the second Captain America film? Oh, I think it's Holy way better. Holy crap. I think it's way better. Me, that was the best one yeah. for a long time. Wow. The, you're talking about the Winter yeah, Soldier. Yeah, right? that was good. Yeah, yeah. Oh, it's okay. better than that. It's better than that. It's filled with awesome action scenes. The uh, The story has some weight to it. It feels like it feels like the decisions the characters are making actually have consequences, which is not normally the deal with Marvel movies, <laughs> right? It's like... You get to the end of the movie, nobody's died, nothing happened really, except for a bunch of civilians. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> the extras all die. Now, let me ask you a question. I heard, uh, you know, a lot of rumblings online that this is the best Spider-Man on film. Is that? Do you think that's possible? Dude, he was really? funny. He acted like Spider-Man. It was. I liked it. I dug it. It, it. There was a great interplay between Spider-Man and Iron Man that I really liked. You'll you'll pick up on that and you'll like it. It was it was a really good Spider-Man. Uh, I'm my sorry, sorry guys. I will fix the audio issue. Um, it, it was just fun. Spider-Man and Ant-Man was in it, uh, and they were just fun to watch. Both yeah, I heard Black Black Panther was a pretty good character too. I, I can't wait to talk more about this next week because I'm thinking this might be the best movie of the year the way people are talking about it. Yeah, Black Panther was you know? ultra cool. He's got his own movie coming out too, and I'm really mm-hmm. excited for that movie just based on his performance in this movie. Um, yeah. You're a really interesting character. Somebody I didn't really know much about. I was aware of the character, but had never, you know, I'm not a comic book guy, so he's never been but in the movie. Come on, man. Before. You know, I'm, I'm a black guy. I know who Black Panther yeah. is, bro. <laughs> come on. <laughs> I'm just fucking with you, man. <laughs> I know the name. I know he's from like some place like Zamunda, like Eddie Murphy and coming to America, yeah. but that's not the same place. I swear to but God, yeah. they said the country he's from like four times, and I shit you not, I swear to God, they said it differently Z- at all four times. <laughs> It's like a, it's like Rwanda, but I want to say Zamunda because that's the funny thing from coming to America. But uh, yeah, I'm looking forward to seeing it, man. I'm really excited. Gonna have a great time with the wife tonight and go out there and celebrate all the, the mothers who brought these wonderful and not so wonderful people into the world. That's right. That's right. I'm gonna do the same so thing. Got, I'm bringing. The, that's why we're doing the show early. Is you you brought it up, but I was right on board because hey, man, we gotta have date night tonight. It's Mother's Day. We gotta bring these fine ladies out. Make sure they have right. awesome nights. Make sure that we you know, check our asses, don't get ourselves in trouble. <laughs> yeah. Well, if you don't do it right tonight, we're going to be celebrating singles night tomorrow. Right. So, I mean, we got to do this thing There the will right be no way, Father's you know I mean? Day. <laughs> yeah, it's going to be a lot of trouble if you don't do this thing right. Now, you guys watching might notice we're a few hosts short this week. Robbie's got to do a little bit of uh, on-site training for his new job, and, and we wish you all the, the success in the world, Robbie. Very proud well, of Robbie man. this week. We're very, very, very happy proud of Robbie. He's got a new job. Big changes up there in Canada, and uh, he might be gone again next week, but that that should be the end of his training. He's got to train for a solid week. So, wish Robbie all the luck in the world. Let him know in the comics that you guys are rooting for him not to drop the soap on on the job. Just do as good as you can, Robbie. <laughs> Wait, and, where's uh, he working? <laughs> I, I thought like he was working at some Can- uh, Canadian prison or something. I don't know. No. Uh, whatever he's whatever he's doing, he didn't really elaborate to us exactly what the job entails. But uh, all the success and love in the world to you, Robbie. Yeah, absolutely, so, man. We look forward to having you back. Uh, but we got a special episode this week because it's just the two of us. We got three topics that we want to cover. And I'm actually really passionate about all three of these topics. So I'm looking forward to this episode, man. Uh, I mean, God. For me, this is harking back to the way it used to be. The very second episode of Beastly Thoughts, we were together. That's right. And and since then, we've been joined at the hip. It's just a very long hit from uh, Georgia to Connecticut. But we've been here every single episode together, and it's meant meant a lot. So let's get back to the way it used to be. Fuck these other hosts, man. Just me and you, baby. (laughs) So we got three topics. The first one is the Overwatch beta. We've both played Overwatch. Uh, I think we're both pretty excited about it. The second topic is going to be uh, Infinite Warfare, and then the third is connected to that. It's going to be COD 4. Uh, we're going to go over these one by one. Uh, I'm I'm really passionate about each one of these. I want to start with Overwatch. You've played the beta. Um, like, 
give me your first impression. Like, uh, you know, real quick first impression. What are you thinking? All right. So the older you get, the less you're interested in learning all the intricacies of these games. You see a ton of characters and you never played a game. You're like, oh, God, it's so much for me to take in. And Kate was like, babe, there's like 100 different characters. They all do different stuff. I was like, oh, no. I started playing it and I immediately fell in love with it. My first uh, initial impression was you can't aim down sights. What is this? But somehow it makes perfect sense. The gameplay is phenomenal. I love the characters. They all seem to be very rambunctious. You know, I'm playing with Tracer because, you know, in my mind, I want to see her turn around and do that ass pose, but she never did it. But <laughs> The one that was deleted from the internet? Yeah. That, I mean, <laughs> she seems like such a fun-loving character, the yeah. way that she you know, talks and her banter throughout the matches, that it seems like it would just be a part of her personality trait to do something like that. I've tried about four different characters. They are as different as night and day. Yeah. Nobody controls the same way. And so you really can kind of make this game your own. It's they really all have fun. like first person controls, right? They're all like essentially a first person controlled character, but they're so varied and their strategies that you use are so varied. It reminds me of a fighting game. Well, right? the thing is, everybody has different speed. Uh, yep. Everybody has like different. Uh, health points like HP. Some of these big characters have like big mechs around them. It takes a long time to shoot them. Yeah. People like Tracer, who I'm really liking. I gotta say, I'm digging this character. You can shoot her two or three times; she's dead. But she has this incredible ability to zip across the the map. Like, she's she hard to shoot because she's so fast. She can teleport, and she can basically do the same thing from um, Modern Warfare Three, uh, where she not Modern Warfare Three, but um, Black not Black Ops. The last Call of Duty. What's the name of it? The one that just came out. <laughs> uh, Black Ops Three. Yeah, Black Ops 3, uh, where you could do the glitch and you kind of go back in time to where you were a few seconds yeah. before. She has that kind of ability, and I found that using that really gives me an advantage on the, on the playing field. But there's also characters that turn into turrets. There's characters that like turn into big boulders of ice. So there, there's 21 down. characters altogether, right? Mm -hmm. 21 characters. And to me, it really does feel like learning a new fighting game, right? It's like you jump into the new Street Fighter, and you'll you'll know how to essentially use a character, right? It'll there'll be a Ryu type character in any any fighting game you get into, uh, yeah. and you you can kind of explore the gameplay from that Ryu type character. And this game has that. It's got Soldier seventy six, which just feels like a Space Marine type character, mm -hmm. right? It's like a, you know, he's got an auto rifle. He can heal himself. He can shoot rockets, and then his super ability is like super mega aimbot, right? Mm -hmm. Then you start to explore some of the other characters, and you can kind of really go out from there. There's uh, one guy, I think his name is Junkrat or something like that, where he's just got a grenade launcher, you know, and he's just firing these grenades. He can also throw a trap on the ground. If a player gets, an uh, enemy player gets caught in the trap, you can blow that motherfucker up. So he's got a long range attack and short range attack, and then he's got this like wheel of death that's a super that yeah, you just turns shoot out. Into it. Yeah, and then, like you said, there's a guy who turns into a turret, right? You just sit there he's and. Not you, he is. He's badass. I played with him. Oh. I think I got. I went on like a twenty kill streak one time. Um, oh. You know, like uh, there's that Zen guy who just like floats around, like doing the Zen thing, and he'll just like <laughs> throw balls at people. But he can also heal his whole team. He's a very powerful mm -hmm. character. But you might not want to be on the front lines <laughs> because he doesn't have a whole lot of health. Uh, I, I like. I, I think it was Reinhardt is the big knight looking guy. Yeah. Uh, he's cool. You got this big ass shield that you can basically protect your entire team with, and you just go rushing in. You got a ton of health, um, and then you got this like big hammer kind of thing that you can mm -hmm. beat down guys who get too close. Uh, it's every character feels very different. Every character that I've tried feels very different. However, there's also this rock paper scissors gameplay going on. So if you're Reinhardt and you got a character playing Genji who's a ninja. He can burn you down very, very quickly. Mm -hmm. So you got to be careful, right? Is just because you're this huge dude doesn't mean that there isn't a counter for that. And there's a counter for every type of character. Um, I'm I'm having a blast just with the with the character design alone. It's they somehow managed to they all the characters feel fresh and new, like I haven't seen them before. But they also feel intriguing and like um, interesting, right? Uh, I, I went and found the old gameplay or the old trailer videos for this game on YouTube. There's, I think, three or four of them, and they're fantastic. They're like Pixar quality, like six minute mm -hmm. movies. Like, it's fantastic. I This game wasn't on my radar. This reminds me of Destiny, man. Remember, yeah, it I, Destiny was it not seems... on my radar, and then all of a sudden I played the beta, and I'm like, down. <laughs> I'm so down. Well, 
the the funny thing for me is when you think of games like this and you think of games like Battleborn, it wasn't really on anyone's radar. Uh, there's a lot of people out there, gaming pundits, who are saying that they aren't really advertising these game these games properly. Nobody knows what they are. This seems like the evolution of what Destiny started. This seems like the evolution of what Evolve could have been. This type of gameplay where it's very varied on the battlefield, everyone has an Achilles heel. And depending on how you play, that Achilles heel could be another opponent coming to easily wipe you out. It's just, it's a new version of chess, if you ask me. And I know that you didn't like Battle, Battleborn nearly as much. I thought Battleborn was very intriguing, too. To me, it's a much slower paced game. It doesn't seem to have nearly the um, the varied abilities of this game because of the character models and whatnot and, and their abilities. But I had a great time playing that, too. And to me, that felt like also the evolution of what Destiny is. Um, and now, you know, especially with this month, all these games being released, my wallet is done. You know, yeah, right. unfortunately, unfortunately, for, unfortunately for me, I didn't really get a chance to play much of it today. Today was my first time actually playing Overwatch. Um, I went to a funeral yesterday. I, I kind of mentioned last week that uh, one of my best friends, lifelong friends, was sick. He passed away Wednesday, so it's been one of those weeks. I'm sorry. Uh, to hear and that, so, man. oh man, life goes on. You know, he wouldn't want me to sit here and be sad about it. He'd want me to say. Life goes on, you know. That's the kind of energy this guy has, mm -hmm. and so I'm, I'm going to honor his his spirit by continuing on to smile and, and be happy. But now that I'm finally getting back into the gaming, God, Overwatch just really caught me off guard. I did not you know, expect. I, it. I love the way it looks. I love yeah, it, the frame rate is silky smooth. Yeah. It runs at 60 frames per second, and yeah. it looks marvelous. It's 1080p on the PS4 and on the Xbox One, and runs at 60 frames per second. I never see it hiccup. Like I never see it hiccup. No matter what I'm doing, um, they, they I guess they have some kind of technology in there that it will actually lower the resolution dynamically. Dynamic. Okay. Wow. If if it starts having problems keeping that frame rate going, but I've never seen it happen. Um, so I don't know. Maybe you know. Maybe I got to get closer into a fight or you know something big ass. I, I've been in some <laughs> crazy stuff. I've probably played seven or eight games. You know, like I said, today was my first time actually playing it. Yeah. And uh, I've been like in some crazy situations where pretty much both teams were all there together. Yeah. You know, you got missiles flying, you got you know projectiles and particle effects and all this stuff going on. I didn't notice a hiccup at all, at all. And the funny thing is, Battleborn. I think that game. Run, I don't know if it runs at sixty. I'm pretty sure it's thirty. No, it's, it's thirty it on be. a good day. Yeah, yeah. It's it's, <laughs> it's a much slower game, but even on uh, Battleborn, I noticed some hiccups. So I wanted whoever, to. I actually wanted to watch see if Digital Foundries. Because Battleborn is out now. Um, Overwatch mm -hmm. doesn't come out till the 28th. It's in the beta now, but uh, it's going to go away and then come back out on the 28th. Battleborn, I swear to God, I'd be surprised if that thing ran at 30 frames per second. That thing it's looks... very slow. It, it was just chunky. And like if you look at it graphically, the th funny thing is, if you look at Overwatch and Battleborn graphically... Overwatch looks much better. Wow. I, I don't think they look that different, right? Is They both kind of have that cel-shaded look to them. You know, they're vibrant colors. I don't understand what's going on with Battleborn that it can't be running at 60 frames per second. Well, see, the thing is, I was looking at them both today. And when you look at the actual character models yeah. and the level design, uh, Overwatch looks just infinitely better. The characters, the way the world looks, the frame rate, it just seems head and shoulders above what Battleborn was. Maybe when you get a little bit of time, you can actually look at the two. Uh, Battleborn has more of a cel shaded look. Overwatch looks a little bit more realistic, like you said, that Pixar look. Yeah, like a, yeah, like a yeah, like a Pixar stuff. kind of thing. Yeah, yeah, they're they're kind of shiny and pristine in Overwatch, and and the fact that the game actually runs that much better and to me looks that much better says a lot about the development. Man, they really went off and went all out and pulled out all the stops to make this game look phenomenal. And these kind of games are new to console gamers. This yeah. is something new. Yeah, I mean, this, this is something we've never. This is very much really a Team Fortress type of archetype right Experience. the difference being you're not playing a class you're playing a character who belongs to a class mm -hmm. um, which i find to be very interesting and frankly more enjoyable because there's so many characters and they could always add more in dlc that you can just keep like playing this game and learning it i don't know if it's ever going to become for me like a main game right i don't know if it's ever mm -hmm. gonna be like the game i'm i'm playing you know for a month straight although when it first mm -hmm. comes out that might happen but I can see myself just kind of continually returning to this game over and over again uh, because it's just it's got a really high fun factor. When I get in there, even if I'm losing, I'm having a good time, man. The, the yeah. controls feel good. I don't know if you got a chance to go into the uh, uh, the settings for this game. No, I haven't. For 
<clears throat> for a console game, it's got unrivaled amount of customization you can do. Uh, you can change the button mapping for each character separately and save that for each character. So, like, if you want, you know, if you want to be able to click in the right button to do a melee on one character, but you want it to shoot rockets on a different character, you can save that independently. Uh, you oh, can, wow. You can change um, the horizontal speed and the... the um, Vertical. Sorry, yeah, the vertical and horizontal speed separately of your aiming. So you can really customize how fast it aims. And basically what I try to do is just kind of... Especially the ability to change or customize your control layout. Wow. This sounds like they're, they're really aiming towards giving console gamers a real PC experience. I, it it does. Me, it feels very much like a PC, the, the amount of adjustment you'd get on a PC. I don't know yeah. if there's a, a slider for your field of view. Well, I, I think they nailed this game. I can't wait for it to come out. I'm buying the Legendary Edition or the you know Super Awesome Edition because <laughs> I want that fucking art book. I want the art book in there. Yeah. <laughs> well, I mean, I didn't know about all these extra features, especially the ability to change or customize your control layout. Wow. This sounds like they're, they're really aiming towards giving console gamers a real PC experience. I, it it does. Me, it feels very much like a PC. The the amount of adjustment you'd get on a PC. I don't know yeah. if there's a uh, slider for your field of view. I know there is on PC. I don't know if there is on um, console. Uh, but you know, you cannot complain. Sixty frames per second what? at 1080p. You can't complain there. One thing that I really found intriguing is even in the middle of a match, if you die and you're just not doing well, you can change characters on the fly. Love that. That's awesome. I wish yeah. more games had that that feature. You might be failing because of you know there might be a particular mm -hmm. class going against you that your character just can't beat. Yeah. You can just swap it out right there on the fly after you die, and right when you respawn, you respawn as a new character. To me, that adds so much more fun and, and much more of a mental strategy to the game because, hey, look, you might be going against somebody who really is – the Achilles heel to the character that you're good at. Right. But you can go back and pick their Achilles heel and come back and fuck them up. Yeah. I think or, it's really or awesome. sometimes <clears throat> some of the maps have like this long kind of uh, like escort mission feel to them where you're trying yeah. to just move this like train Tank. or whatever through the level. And the, the map actually actually changes as you move through. So you're, you might be in a wide open area at the beginning and want like a sniper or long range character, but by the end you want somebody who's much more better at close range. So, you know, like you can change it up as you play your strategy as a team too. If you play this with a team, I think you're going to have much more success than if you just yeah. go in here solo, uh, because you're going to want a healer, you're going to want a tank, you're going to want a, a you know DPS guy, um, and. If you make sure you have all those people and you're working together as a team, I think you're going to find that your team is winning more games, uh, which you want to do because you want experience out of this. You know, you they have this kind of like loot system in there mm -hmm. as you loot level up. Stuff. Yeah, as, each time a game ends, you get experience, you level up, and then you can you basically get these packages that you can open up every time you level up a you know a new level, and. Uh, they have cool stuff in there. You know, it's like you, you can get little spray paint tags that you can spray around the levels. Uh, you can get new poses. You can get new outfits for the characters. Even some of them are more involved in outfits, too. Like, you can get an old-looking version of a character or a young-looking version of a character. Like it, you know, Oh, really? Yeah, I didn't know it's, that. Wow. it's a big difference. Wow, um, so they, they're really going all out to kind of include every possible thing in this kind of game. Yeah. Now, I don't I don't know too much about this game as far as the single-player campaign, but I'm guessing it I don't does think there is one. one. No, no. So it's, 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 it's purely this. Yeah, it's this. Okay. And I believe That's it's, it's going to retail for like 40 bucks. Is that am I? Oh, no, 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 really? it's 60. It's 60. Okay. It's 60. No, well, I was thinking of a different game. I'm sorry, my bad. Okay, because Battleborn has a similar mode, not nearly as robust as what we see in Overwatch, but it has this PvP arena that you can go to and play, kind of like Destiny, uh, but it does have a robust single-player campaign, so that might be the their, you know, I guess, thing that will draw people who like single-player kind of experiences a little bit more. Yeah, it'd be uh, cool but, if there was some kind of single-player, because you, you want to explore these characters. These characters are so fun, you know, just to hang out with that you just want to know more about them. Yeah, yeah. Well, I'm definitely going to be buying it. This month is going to be rough for me. <laughs> Two days until Uncharted 4. Yeah. Uh, I mean, geez, it's, the wallet's gone. It's gone. I probably shouldn't go out tonight because I won't be, be able to oh, afford no, the games to I tonight. want. Yeah, right. <laughs> Celebrating singles tomorrow. <laughs> yeah, but uh, I'm definitely going to be picking this game up. Do you happen to know off the top of your head how long this uh, beta is going to be going on? 
Uh, they, because today I think is it was first supposed time to actually end to on Monday, but I think they said they were extending it a day, so I think it'll go to a Tuesday. Sweet, sweet. okay. So I think we well, got a couple more days of it. I'll, I'll try to get back into that and play it a little bit more uh, after I get back tonight. You know, unless I'm doing other things when I get home. But uh, I plan to have. I don't, what are other things? Shut your mouth. Shut your mouth. <laughs> <laughs> gotcha again. Yeah. But uh, I'm I'm looking forward to it. I'll try to get into it maybe a little bit tonight or tomorrow after I get home from work. It's a really fun game, man. Uh, just getting into, into it and kind of my strategy when it comes to any game like this and even fighting games. I have a long, illustrious history in fighting games is I will learn one character and I will become really good with that character before I move on to another. And that's always been my strategy. And I've taken that with me into old age or middle age, however you want to call it, 36. Yeah. But. That's why I went in there. I was like, well, I want to I want to try out one character. And for me, I always pick the little lady. I like looking at women more than guys. I want to see some big dude's back. I want to see a woman's ass. Come on now. This is 2016. No, I'm just kidding. But um, I picked Tracer, and I want to get really good with her, and I want to get to the point where I can just zip around as soon as I get shot and have the advantage. But I, I played with about four or five different characters. Some have the ability to jump what seems like 100 meters into yeah. the sky. Yeah, I was like, what yeah. the hell? This chick with this big armor suit on. She can jump super high in the sky, and she kind of has, like, boosters to come down. And her special ability is she shoots, like, 50 rockets out. I was yeah. like, this is, is that, insane. Oh, what's her name? I forgot. I, I, I don't I don't know all the names yet. Um, yeah, who's I don't the know sniper? How you know Have you used the sniper yet? That, that's the chick that Kate <clears throat> plays with. She's Excuse purple. Me. Yeah, yeah, that's awesome. She's awesome, man. Kate loves her, She's got, man. like, a regular machine gun, but when you ADS, it, the same gun just becomes a sniper. And you can one shot people. You can like oh, some yeah, of the yeah. characters. You can one shot. That. Like if you yeah, get a headshot, Tracer, I killed. Yeah, yeah. Uh, one of the uh, missions where you escort the tank, uh, whoever the sniper was on the opposing team, got on top of the little uh, train, whatever it was. I didn't see him. I'm, I'm zipping around his tracer, and then all of a sudden, dude. Yeah. Bloop. And then of course you got to watch the uh, kill cams. Yeah. Here, so well, you exactly. can turn that off. You can turn off oh, the really? kill cams. Yeah, in the options. Think, there's so many options in this game. Oh, wow, yeah. you can experience fully your own wow that's incredible man yeah and if you want to play you know if you want to stream it or record audio there's a ton of audio sliders that you can be moving around too which is nice uh-huh. a nice feature um yeah i mean it, it's got a ton of cool stuff in it i'm really excited for it um well just based on what i know right now from what i play between this game and battleborn i don't think battle i don't think battleborn really has a chance you know as far as the competition goes it just feels more it's faster it feels more fluid the characters seem more entertaining and robust. I wanted to like so Battleborn. Cool. I like, you know, I like Gearbox software. I like Gearbox games. I want I went into that beta thinking I was going to love this. You know, I like the the strike nature of the single player. You know, it reminded me of like a mini raid in Destiny. Like that's the kind of thing I love to do. But that frame rate was fucking hot trash, man. <laughs> like it was <laughs> Tell just Tell me how you really feel. God bro. damn, that was bad. You know, and I, I'm not going to play it on PC cuz I hate PCs. <laughs> yeah, tell, tell me about it. Me neither. So I, I wanted to play it on PS4, and it was just, it was hot trash, man. It was terrible. I, yeah. Other than that, like, most of what I played in that game I thought was enjoyable. But that frame rate was so bad. <laughs> I, I agree. I agree. It was really slow. It was very lethargic gameplay. Yeah. All right, let's talk some Infinite Warfare. Infinite. Like, Infinite. Infinite Warfare. So that we saw the, the reveal for Infinite Warfare this week. Single player campaign. Yeah, yeah the single player campaign. Uh Infinity War, this is an Infinity War developed Call of Duty. Uh, they released it, and I think it's sitting somewhere around seven. The trailer on YouTube is sitting somewhere around 750,000 dislikes. dislikes. And is it like 250,000 likes? 230,000 likes. So it's got like three times as many dislikes as it's got likes. Now, I think that's probably an inflated number. Uh, I mm-hmm. think that a lot of people are just disliking it to like jump on the bat bandwagon and see how high they can get that number <laughs> um but man uh this is just the first of all this is just a single player like come on guys we have no yeah, idea what the multiplayer is going to be for this game this happens every time they reveal the single player campaign trailer you know people this is probably the most people have un, you know disliked mm-hmm. but it's more of the same you know the, the visual aesthetic is pretty much what we're used to now in the eighth generation uh, the character models look kind of similar to Advanced Warfare, mm-hmm. and I think for a lot of gamers that's a turnoff because a lot of people didn't like Advanced Warfare, so they immediately see that image and their mind goes, this is another Advanced Warfare and I'm not going to like it. Uh, for me, when it comes to Call of Duty, 
I'm kind of in the middle because I want Call of Duty to be great again, you know? Make Call of Duty great again. (laughs) Trump, 2016, (laughs) he's going to make Call of Duty fucking great again. But I want them to be great again. I want the the game to be what it used to be. But I'm just thinking now with, with the direction and the climate of what these developers are making that there really isn't any room for this type of game anymore. I think that it's the time for Call of Duty as we knew it. It's come and gone. I think it's got to truly evolve into something more of what we're, we just talked about. Something like, you know, Battleborn. Something you know, Robbie has- said, I think it was last week, actually. Like, upon reflection, it, it kind of caught me, right? Is he said, you know, people were asking for innovation, innovation, innovation. We finally got innovation, and everybody wants them to go back to what they were making four years ago, right? Yes. Yeah. It's, it's pretty much true. I mean... Call of Duty was like, you know, that kind of arcadey multiplayer experience that, you know, boots on the ground. There was some tactics to it. It was fun. But they've gotten so far away from that that, like, all the old school fans like me, I was a, I'm a very much a Call of Duty gamer up until Advanced Warfare. And I, mm-hmm. I just can't get into these new titles, man. I, I don't, I don't see, I don't see me playing any, Call of Duty like ever again at this point, unless they like do something wow. dramatic. The dream is dead. I don't. Like, I'm sure that there are at least a thousand years subscribers that just tear dropped <laughs> when they heard you say that. <laughs> ever again? What the hell is going on? I don't know what to expect. You know, Infinity Ward, they're really good at making Call of Duties, and of course, the real, I guess, the likes and dislikes will be reflected once we see more of the yeah. multiplayer experience. Uh, for me, the campaigns are something I very rarely play. Very seldom will I sit and play through a Call of Duty, you know, single player experience. I'm more into the multiplayer and right. getting in there and playing with people. So, the mo- the single player campaign that they showed, you know, was futuristic. It did show some nice changes. If you ask me, I'm not going to trash it because you know I still honestly like Call of Duty. Uh, space shooting, you know, ships in space. They've got ships shooting in outer, outer space, and Star Wars doesn't. What the hell is yeah, going on? What's up on? with that? <laughs> yeah. What's up with that? That's a whole new topic. No Battlefield, uh, Star Wars Battlefront, no ships in space, but Call of Duty Infinite Warfare does. The game looks pretty. You know, it, it has more of the same. I, we didn't really see much gameplay, though. Like, I, it was, yeah, it was. Did we ever see, much, like, a, a, a character actually bring up the sights to his face and, like, no, get that first person more, view? It was the same thing they did with Advanced Warfare, where they showed, you know, people pointing and you see drones flying by and yeah. all this stuff. It's more more the same. Um, I, I want them to be successful, man. And I don't know. It's it's like you're damned if you do and you're damned if you don't if you call duty at this point. If you keep it. But then again, like if you talk about keeping the same or, or moving forward and changing it, look what they're doing with Battlefield. Battlefield 1, they're going back to the original Battlefield. They're remaking that. And there's going to be boots on the ground. And people seem to be really excited about that. Yeah, the theory Maybe, seems to be it's going to be like an alternate history of World War One yeah. or kind of the area – era between World War One and World War II, which could be very interesting. Yeah, but, I mean, when you look at it, it's something we haven't seen in a very long time, that era of gameplay. And just seeing that makes me want to really delve into it because it's been so many years since we've seen a game, you know, take on that era of a first-person shooter, yeah. you know? If, yeah. they, if they were to go back with a Call of Duty and maybe... I guess we can kind of see what's going on with the remaster, but if they were to go back and maybe re-release or redo an older Call of Duty or go back to that time frame, they might find more success than consistently moving further into the future. People like tangible things. People like guns that they can relate to. Right. Like yeah, I mean, uh, yeah, but absolutely. The further you go into the future, the more it's becoming hypotheticals and possibilities and what we may or may not be able to do in 50 years is it just takes away the realism that made Call of Duty so successful in the beginning. In the beginning, everybody played COD because this is a gun that I've seen before. Yeah, I get you to know, use an M16. Older, I get to use, you know, like you a, know what you know, it whatever. is. Yeah, MP5 or. And ever since Black Ops 2, they've been going forward, you know, farther and farther into the future with te- possible realities of what these weapons would be. And it takes away the realism because to me, that's what really made Call of Duty successful. People, yeah. when you held a gun, you're like, this is like the real thing. It sounds like it. This is real. I feel like I'm really blasting somebody in the fucking face. But it was also, like, fast-paced, so it wasn't boring, you know? Yeah. Like, so there were a lot of games that, you know, they had real guns. Like, the early Battlefield games, they Mm -hmm. had the real guns, but they were slow-paced, and they were on these huge maps, and Mm -hmm. they felt like running simulators so much of the time. Yeah. When COD 4 came out, it was fast-paced. The maps were small. They were fun. It's insane. Yeah. Yeah. But the tactics were there. Like you could, you could play tactically in that game. I, I, I don't know. One of the things too is, you know, this game started development 
while Ghost was ago. out, yeah. right? You know, so, mm-hmm. it, you know, they they were in development for the year Ghost was out. Advanced Warfare came out. They were in development then. And they, Black you know, they're finishing development now while Black Ops 3 is out. So I don't know that they really got that feedback that we're sick of the future, the future. stuff until it was already fucking too late, you know? Like they'd already <laughs> developed the game, you know? So it's like maybe maybe next year or the year after they start reacting to that consumer reaction where um you know we're telling them we want a, you know we want a world war ii game again or we want you know a vietnam era game or a 1980s era game or a modern warfare game again mm-hmm. it may it just takes time they don't develop these games overnight you know so well, this game started thing, development while ghosts was live and while advanced warfare was live and people reacted positively to advanced warfare for the most part so they probably thought they until, were on the right track. <laughs> well, they reacted. They reacted positively. Uh, they they reacted that way until people played Advanced Warfare, and and then <laughs> you know now people see this game. It looks like Advanced Warfare. So you imme- you immediately combine those two. You know you're like, oh god, there's going to be more of that crap. I don't want to play it. But they should probably take a cue from games like Far Cry Primal, which I do have and I've never played once. Mm-hmm. I suck for that. Yes. <laughs> uh, people like drastic changes, and especially if that change somehow works and translates well into a game. Uh, and in the eighth uh, console generation, we haven't seen World War One or World War Two. To see a good World War One or Two game, you got to go back to PlayStation Two, or, or some games in PS3. So people would love to see that world translated into this current hardware, and in a more believable sense, people could actually really get into it and experience it in a whole new way. World War Two a- is perfect for shooters mm-hmm. for two reasons: the weapons were really fun and interesting, and you had very defined good guys and bad guys. Right? Oh, yeah. So, like, yeah. it was just, it was a perfect video game setup, you know? So, I think I think that's a well that they can keep going back to. They were digging hard in that well in, like, the late 2000s, mid-2000s, late 2000s. They were 2000s. all in it, yeah. Like, every, I mean, we had every Call game. of Duty's coming out. We had, uh, like, um, uh, Medal of Honor's coming out. I mean, there were just, there seemed like to be five World War II first-person shooters every year. But now those have kind of gone away. I feel like I feel like the time is right for another one. Yeah. Well, I mean, in the back of my mind, I'm thinking that this game will see some success. But in your humble opinion, what do you think they need to do to to bring Call of Duty back to, I guess, the, the great place it used to be for gamers? Do they I have know, to man. go back? I feel like it you think just might be over. It just, you know, it had a good run. People are just moving on to things that are fresher and newer. It just might be over. You know, everything has that run eventually, right? Nothing lasts forever. I think it might just kind of be like it's hard to get excited about a new Call of Duty at this point. You know, when there's well, newer stuff like Overwatch or Battle Overwatch. Born or, or, you know, even Uncharted 4's multiplayer. Oh, it's so good. You know, Destiny. You know, like these newer games are just incorporating so many different concepts and so many different ways of playing um, that, you know, Modern Warfare 4, Call of Duty 4, sorry, Modern Warfare introduced that Kara on a Stick model where you just chase after, you know, experience and leveling up your guns and, you know, building up your character, uh, you know, leveling up your, you know, putting extended mags on, getting frag grenades, frags times three, you know, like all that yeah. leveling up. It was a carrot on a stick and it was fucking brilliant. But now every game does that and a lot of games do it way better, better. and to a yeah. much greater extent. So, you know, how do you, how do you, how do you keep going with that? You know, I don't know. They've, they've got to restructure the entire, you know, franchise. It's got to, they tried to do something similar with Black Ops 3, where you could play with up to three other players and go through the single player campaign, which is, to me, it was a nice move, you know? I mean, whether the campaign was great or not remains to be seen. I really personally didn't like it that much, but to be able to play through that, you know, Kate and I and Robbie played through it. We played some with Not Too Nerdy, and it was fun. You know, I'm talking to my friends, and we're going through the campaign, and we're watching cutscenes together. They need to continue to push the envelope and they need to try to get ahead of the curve because everybody else is right there on the cusp of change. You know, we got games like, you know, even Destiny still. They have pushed the envelope so far and they're doing things that nobody else has done. Now we got all these games, Overwatch, Battleborn, learning from what Destiny done. Now they're trying to expand on that. For Call of Duty, they got to get ahead of everybody else and come up with some new fresh ideas to make Call of Duty fresh and fun again because you know you can get into a call of duty map and, and and play one match or two matches and you'll have fun but after a while you start to realize there are other games that demand more of your brain power to play 
Or they just offer something new and fresh, you know, instead of yeah. instead of customizing your character to have extended mags or run a little bit faster, you can play a completely different fucking dude who has a huge ass shield and, an, yeah. and a goddamn hammer that just keeps smacking people on the head with, you know? Yeah, or, there's a guy who, who kept grabbing me with a damn chain. Yeah, and when he yeah, grabbed me with that chain, I was in. like, what's going on? <laughs> yeah. I mean, there's so much stuff going on in these new games. So in Call of Duty, they've got to learn from that. They have to. Yeah, but at the same time, like... What what can you do without losing that essential Call, Call of Duty ness about it? Right, that that core Call of Duty feel. If that goes away, then are you even really Call of Duty? You might have the name on the top of the box, but are you even that's really a scary Call of Duty? Thought. That's that's really a scary thought because is it the only like, alternative... can't we just move on? Can't like we can move on. We don't have to. Well, we can remember the good old yourself. days. You gotta ask yourself: Will Activision just move on from Call of Duty? Hell no, they're not going to. Oh no, they, they'll keep making just, the games, but they you know, will. I, I just see them declining in popularity as we go along, unless they can really figure out a way. You know, I think of Modern Warfare; they are going to come out with the remastered version of uh, COD Four, right? That's going to be included if you buy the eighty dollars version of Infinite Warfare. Which I'm buying because that's the only way to get it. I mean, for me, I'm spending eighty dollars on a game that I know is good. And the possibility of, of the new game being all right. Man, I played a shit ton of Call of Duty 4, though. I want to see it, bro. And I already I own it, the man. game. I already own the game. Spending $80, to me, is a little rough. It's a little rough. I, under, I understand. Like, if they were but, selling that separately for $20, I'd be all, okay, great. $20 would, is the would, perfect pr- place, price for this remastered version of the game that I played a thousand hour, hours, hours of, right? But $80? <laughs> that's a lot that's a lot the, the thing is right you gotta look at what you're getting too i mean all these hacked lobbies are going to disappear the game is going to grab it better be they better, it better not be by flying around in that damn map on my ps4 yeah. I'm pissed off but um you're paying you know for this old experience that you know is good you don't have to ask. You already know it's a good experience. You know that the gameplay is there. You know that that old school boots on the ground Twitch gameplay that existed years ago is going to be more pristine, yeah. look better, probably have a smoother frame rate. You know, it's going to look just so awesome on the PlayStation 4 and Xbox One. I'm going to pay because that's what I do. You know, I, I get all these new games. A lot of them I don't play. I'm honestly, I'll, I'll probably play. buy it. I'll probably buy it. I, but it just seems. You couldn't tell me you're not going yeah. to buy it because I think you. It just it doesn't seem it. it doesn't sit well with me, though, that. The part of this game that I want, the part of this pra- package that I want, that I'm really looking forward to, is the remastered COD 4, which is $20 addition to, you know, just regular Infinite Warfare, which I'm not interested in at all. Like, I'm just not. Like, maybe they come out with the multiplayer trailer later this year, right? They'll come out with a multiplayer trailer for Infinite I think Warfare. they're going to show to E3, yeah. And maybe it'll be fantastic. Maybe it'll be the new hotness, and I'm like, oh, I, like, I pissed my pants right there on the spot because I can't wait. I can't wait any what longer. What are the chances of that? What are the chances, though? <laughs> like, <laughs> <laughs> not really good. Not, you know? not that hot, right? Like, I yeah. I don't want to fight Call of Duty in space. I don't want to have spaceship battle. I, maybe I do. Maybe I do. Maybe it's going to be, like, the best thing ever. I don't know. For some reason, I've just got a real negative impression about Infinite Warfare right now, uh, and that well, that can change. I, I don't really have like a basis for it. I just don't like the I last few say, Call of Duties haven't been for me, so I'm just not expecting it to be for me. I will say that Black Ops Three is a really good Call of Duty, uh, and a lot of people like it. A lot of people don't, but you know, if you jump into it and that's what you're playing, it's a great game. There's a lot in that game that you're basically paying for three completely complete games for the price of one when you get Black Ops Three. Yeah. Um, that's so true. it's really it's really worth it, and depending on whether or not Infinity War can do something similar, it might be worth it. You know, they are coming out with a to... zombies mode. They said, yeah. So they're gonna have a zombies so, mode. They're gonna have multiplayer, and they're gonna have a single player. And those Call of Duty games are a really good value. Like even if you only play like one of those modes, you're like, gonna you, get, you your, get money's your money's worth, worth normally. Yeah. So I don't know where I don't know where this negativity is coming from. I'll be honest with you. I don't I don't really understand why I'm so negative. Well, I think it's just that I didn't like Advanced Warfare. I didn't like Black Ops Three. So I just don't expect to like the next one. I think that might you be know, it, and it's probably not fair. A wise man once told me that it's just popular to be down on Call of Duty. I think that was you like two years ago. <laughs> um, and so now the, the table has completely turned. You know, you've gone 360 all the way around the briar. Right. And now, you, now you're in a different place. You know, uh, I guess you've been burned by Call of Duty. And they've stepped, I guess, too far away and not really revolutionized enough. They haven't really pushed... 
You know, it, you know what it is. I I think for me is that they turn that into a game that a lot of people do like, but it's not why I got on board Call of Duty. And I actually I don't have any ill will toward the developers of Advanced Warfare or Black Ops Three. I think they made a really really fun games, uh, but they're targeted at an audience that I'm not a part of, and that's fine. Gotcha. I don't have to be the target audience for everything. I do like having the gaming market be segmented so you can find exactly what you want to get. You know. Uh, if you want to look for a 4X strategy game, you could find one. If you want it to be based in space, you can find one. Mm-hmm. You know, like if you want a, a first person shooter that has. Shooting flowers or flowers killing zombies? Yeah, right? Like there's there's enough. There's enough <laughs> Who would have thought, to, man? Who yeah, would have thought? Right? <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. It's, it's, it's something for everybody. It's just unfortunate that something that really you used to identify with the way you did has changed so much. And, and for me, that's how I feel because yeah. that call of duty, it used to be synonymous with Briar rabbit. And now it's like Briar rabbit kicks the shit out. I call it, get the fuck out of here. Destiny. Where you at baby? You know? <laughs> that, that's, that's what's happened to you. Yeah. Now it's weird. <laughs> now uh, you guys let us know in the comments, how you feel about the new call of duty, Inf- infinite warfare um, and whether or not you're going to be picking it up. Also, I want to know in the comments below, are you guys interested in getting, Uncharted 4, Thief's End. It'll be dropping in 48 hours. <laughs> um, I'm very, very excited about that. And if you don't have a PlayStation 4 and you've seen some of the reviews, is this game the game that may turn the tide and get you to buy a PS4? Now, I just did a story. The story uh, that I just covered is that Uncharted 4 is the highest rated Metacritic game this console generation, which is averaging across the board after 700 reviews. They're averaging a 94 out of 100 which is incredible after 700 reviews. And everybody who I've seen, I've, I've watched a few spoiler-free reviews, has really gotten me hyped for this game. I just can't wait to play it. Oh, my God. I don't know what I'm going to do first because I love the, the campaign, but after hearing some of the stuff that goes on in the – the, uh, I love the multiplayer, but after hearing what's going on, going on in the campaign, I really – I can't wait to get this game and play it. And, oh, my God, it's going to be a lot of fun. Oh, God. That's the game's going to stop everything else for me right now. Yeah, I'm they sorry, do. They, they do a nice job with those games. Uh, right from the get go, I've loved all three of them so far. I'm looking forward. You know, I don't play many single player games, but I'm really looking forward to this one. I mean, when you see the game, I'm sure you've seen some of the, the you know, the gameplay. This is graphically one of the best looking games I've ever seen. And the thing that blows my mind is how is Naughty Dog able to get all this out of the consoles when so many people struggle to do it? It's like so uh, many. I other don't know. Developers. That's what. That's the same thing I'm wondering about Overwatch. Like, why? Why can Overwatch do what so many people are struggling to do? 1080p, yeah. 60 frames. Yeah. yeah. I don't get you know, it. I don't get it. It's, it's insane. It's, it's magic. Totally they, insane. Got, they got pixie dust. <laughs> There's somebody in there with a cauldron, cauldron <laughs> just stirring a pot. Must Maybe it just comes down to like guys. money and development time. Like if you could spend the money to you know optimize your game, maybe that's all it takes. Or maybe now that we're further on in the generation... People are kind of like learning how to Understanding get this done. Understanding the hard, hardware more, yeah. Well, but I mean, they're basically PCs, so. Well, the thing that makes me excited <laughs> is we're two years into the PlayStation Four and the Xbox One, mm-hmm. and and games look like this, you know, and I'm sure this is not the full potential of what these consoles can do. I want to see that game. It's probably going to be two or three years from now that actually we know is pushing this hardware to the limit. Well, the Last you know, of Us kind of thing. The Last of Us on PS3, perfect example. Yeah, I want to see the. I want to see what these consoles are truly capable of. But it's really exciting to see something that looks as good as uh, the Uncharted Four Thieves End coming two years into the life cycle, and it looks that damn good. I'm speaking of to- Last of Us, my friend Skinny just got Last of Us Beastly. You got to hook oh, up with him. He's just getting into yeah. multiplayer. He's just getting into it, and he's like loving it. I told yes, him, I told him he wins at the end. I told I told him he's got to hook up with you. Get you guys could be bitch bomb buddies. <laughs> <laughs> really? That's you told him. Yeah. God damn it. Yeah, I uh, believe it or not, uh, I probably played more of that this week than anything else. Uh, of I, like did. I said, I played, <laughs> of course. I, I kind of got away from it. You know, how you step away from a game for a month or two, and yeah. then you come back, get your ass kicked, and you think, well, my time here is done. I felt like that for like two days, and I went back in and started destroying people. Now I'm back. I feel. Full of myself awesome. again, ready to kick ass. You know what's funny? Yeah, so- I played on Friday. I played Trials of Osiris with viewers. Uh, Wilson, I think, he was in the chat, and uh, and uh, a couple other guys, and we were having a blast playing Trials of Osiris and Destiny, right? But Trials of Osiris is as sweaty as it gets, right? 
It's like mm -hmm. everybody's trying to, as hard as they can to win nine straight games so they can go to the lighthouse and get that loot. And then I went into Overwatch. I played a little bit of Overwatch later that day, and I played a little bit of Overwatch yesterday and this morning. And I'm like, this is just a completely different experience. I'm just having like fun with like no <laughs> stress at all. Like, oh, oh man. Fun. It is. I, so I'm, I'm guessing. I'm guessing on the 28th, Overwatch is going to be in your collection. Oh, I already ordered the. Uh, I ordered the legendary. <laughs> yeah, you edition. got the art book coming. Yeah, I got the art book coming. It comes with this You're big ass kidding. statue. I'm like, get the statue out of here. <laughs> I don't want a fucking <laughs> statue. <laughs> awesome, awesome. But the man. art book, I couldn't resist the art book. Wilson, team fun. He's in chat right now. <laughs> yeah, man. Uh, I'm looking forward to it. Uh, God, I didn't even know Battleborn was out. Now I feel like I'm really getting old. But this has been a tough week on me. So yeah, at least allow you'll be me that forgiven, week. I think. Next <laughs> yeah, week, though, you better get your shit together. <laughs> yeah, man. Damn, this is insane. <laughs> All right. I think that's it for today. Uh, we both have to get ready and go to take our lovely women out for dinner. Make sure we stay yeah. married in the future. Yeah, I'll let you know how it goes tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Beastly, got anything we should be looking forward to this week? I Aside just from Unch or, or, this Uncharted morning, 4. I rendered, oh, Uncharted 4 is going to be on this week. Yeah. Oh, my God. I had a dream that I already had it, and I woke up, and I was real pissed off this morning. Oh, that's the worst. <laughs> uh, that sucks. <laughs> I was like, oh, yeah, this is awesome. I woke up. I was like, what the fuck is this? But uh, I rendered 15 videos this morning. And uh, they're going to be coming up this week. I got some really good Last of Us gameplay on there. And I also got some incredible news. So you guys be looking forward to that on the channel. And I appreciate everybody who swings by and checks out my videos. It means a lot to me. Thank you, everybody. Uh, this week I've got... All right. So I keep promising another episode of Shutter to Keep It. I'm going to make it happen. Capella they keep or asking high water you for it too, this week. <laughs> this week it's going to happen. It'll probably be out Tuesday or Wednesday. I also have... I have uh, first impressions of Overwatch basically completed, but I mean, if you watch this, then you really don't need to watch that because <laughs> it's basically the same thing. It's um, more Briar Rabbit. That's all you need. Go watch it. <laughs> and of course, more Destiny to come. Uh, I'll be streaming. I pretty much settled the stream schedule out on uh, Twitch uh, Mondays, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday, and then pretty much uh, when I can on the weekends. I'm really enjoying Twitch streaming, Beastly. Wow. Like it, it's on my eyes. Holy shit. I'll tell wow. you, it's been really fun. Like playing with playing with viewers and uh, the difference between Twitch and YouTube, right? Is like you can you can interact with your YouTube community with the guys in your chat, right? In in your comments, but it's not like a one to one conversation. On Twitch it really does. You're having an actual conversation, right? Mm -hmm. That continues. It's not just like I'll comment and then reply to a comment. It's like a continuing conversation, and I've really come to enjoy that quite a bit. So I've been doing that a lot, and you can look forward to more. <laughs> I don't know what enjoy that was. That. That was a tangent. <laughs> All right, guys, we're going to end the show. Thank you guys very much for watching. Happy Mother's Day, everybody. Yeah, happy Mother's Day. We'll see you next time. I will be married tomorrow. <laughs>